Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the LED Luminaire Analysis Webinar. My name is Michael Govan, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Today's speaker is Dave Jacobson, our Senior Application Engineer, and he's going to take over at this point, and I hope you enjoy the webinar. Hey, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending our webinar session today. Uh, quickly, the, the format of this webinar is going to be a 25 to 30-minute presentation, uh, followed by a question and answer session. So at any point during the webinar, uh, please feel free to submit your questions uh, using the question box in the, in the GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll address all the questions at the end of the webinar. And I'll, I'll try to... Muted. Unmuted. <laughs> Mike, I think you keep muting and unmuting me. Um, so. Okay, uh, again, I'll try to remind folks during the webinar um, about to send in some questions. Uh, before we get started, just a couple quick notes. Uh, some additional resources. Uh, we have our past TracePro webinars. We have uh, video tutorials. Uh, we have TracePro tutorials, uh, as well as information on our upcoming training classes. And just on that note, um, our next two training classes, uh, we have one scheduled uh, in Ghent, Belgium, uh, starting the week of September 16th. Uh, first two days will be an introduction to TracePro, and then we'll have a one-day course on optimiza optimization with TracePro. Uh, then in a couple weeks later, we'll have some training sessions here in Littleton, Massachusetts at our headquarters. I will be doing two days of an introduction to TracePro. Uh, then we'll also be looking at an optimization, uh, day of optimization training. Uh, we also have uh, stray light analysis and scheme macro programming courses available as well. Uh, if anybody's interested in that, please contact us here, uh, sales at lambdares.com, and we'll be happy to uh, help you out there. Uh, in addition, we'll be presenting a workshop on LED luminaire design optimization. Uh, I'll be talking about theory, uh, methods, and applications. Uh, and that'll be in Bregenz, Austria, as part of the LED Professional Symposium and Expo. Uh, the date for the, the workshop will be October 2nd. Uh, the, the, profession, the LED Professional Symposium and Expo runs, I believe it is September 3rd. 30th through October 2nd. Uh, so if anybody's interested in that, uh, either drop us a note here and we can forward the information along or check out um, LED Professional Magazine. Uh, so with that, uh, let's get started with today's webinar. Uh, again, it's going to be LED Luminaire Analysis, and we're going to look at a, basically an application start to finish. Uh, this is sort of a, a back to basics webinar. We're going to basically focus in on applying properties, setting up the models, and starting to run the ray trace and getting some results. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, we're going to import a Luminaire model from a CAD program into TracePro. Uh, we'll look at using the TracePro bridge for SolidWorks to simplify the workflow. Uh, we'll apply some surface and material properties. We'll set up the LED sources uh, using the surface source property in TracePro. Uh, we'll run the ray trace, uh, analyze the results, take a look at irradiance maps, candela plots, uh, IES and LDT files, and then we'll wrap it all up with questions and answers at the end. And once again, submit any questions you have uh, during the course of the webinar using that question box in the control panel. So the, the goal here is to analyze this LED-based luminaire uh, imported from a CAD program. Uh, it's a simple little desk lamp model. Uh, anybody that's gone to some of my training classes may have seen this model in the past. And here's what the, the typical workflow is going to look like, and this is pretty much the way we're going to go today. We'll design the Luminaire in the CAD program. Uh, in this case, we're going to assume that's done. Uh, we're not actually going to be doing any of the design work today. But then we're going to import that model into TracePro, and you have several options, SAT, STEP, 
Aegis. Uh, if you're using the TracePro bridge for SolidWorks, you also have, can do a TracePro OML file. We'll then apply the material and surface properties. We'll set up the LED sources. Uh, in this case today, we're going to use the surface source property, uh, but another option is to use a ray file uh, downloaded from an LED manufacturer. Uh, then you'd run the ray trace, analyze the results, uh, export IES or LDT files, and then finally generate the lighting report. And here's that, that same process sort of more visually. Here's our CAD model. Uh, here's the model in TracePro with the ray trace, uh, exporting the IES file to our IES analysis utility, and then finally generating a lighting report uh, based on the ray trace results. And here's a quick thing. Here's our CAD model. Uh, in this case, this is in SolidWorks. Uh, it doesn't have to be SolidWorks. It could be ProEngineer, CATIA, Inventor, RhinoCAD, really any of the you know, 3D solid modeling programs could be used. Here's that CAD model then imported into TracePro. Uh, some of the properties we'll be using today, uh, we'll be applying a perfect absorber property to our target or our, our desk surface here, uh, a black paint property applied to the, the light source of the luminaire itself. Uh, we'll have a borosilicate window in front of the, uh, the lamp or in front of the, the reflector. Uh, the reflector itself is going to have a mirror coating on it. And then our LEDs for this application, I just picked Cree XPE, uh, the 2600 to 3700 Kelvin uh, LED. So it's a warm white LED, and we have four of them here. And as we go along, we'll, we'll get into more detail on each of these parts. So now what I want to do, sort of is the, the heart of this webinar, is to actually go through all of those steps live. Um, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go into SolidWorks. And here's my SolidWorks model. Uh, as I said, I've already pre-built it. I will not try to build the SolidWorks model live. I'm not that good with SolidWorks. Uh, but you can see the reflector here, the desk lamp. Uh, I added my target surface here as well. Uh, so these are all the components. We can also take a look. This has the reflector in it, and I'm going to just turn off the display of a couple parts here, and my diffuser or my glass window. So we can take a look at the reflector. In this case, this reflector it's a faceted reflector with curved facets. And I actually made this reflector in, um, in TracePro. We've added a new feature to the, the 3D optimizer in TracePro to allow you to design and optimize curved facets on reflectors, so either concave or convex. So I did that separately in TracePro and then added that reflector here into the SolidWorks model. So I'll, I'll try and touch on that a little bit more as we go along as well. Let me turn my other parts back on. Now for the people that are working with the TracePro Bridge for SolidWorks, and for those of you that are not, um, the TracePro Bridge for SolidWorks is an add-in we have for SolidWorks that lets you apply uh, some of your optical properties right in the SOLIDWORKS environment, and then save them as part of the SOLIDWORKS model. And then you can export a TracePro uh, OML file right from SOLIDWORKS to TracePro. The advantage of this is that as you go and make changes to your model, you're not then having to reapply those properties every time you export and import into TracePro. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, which one's I going to do here? I'm going to apply, just to show a quick demo of the, of the uh, TracePro Bridge for SolidWorks, I'm going to apply here on the glass window, right here in front of the reflector. I'm going to go and click the TracePro tab, which is added in when, we, when the bridge is installed. I'm just going to do a right-click, choose Material. 
and I am going to pick from the glass catalog and I'm going to pick borosilicate glass. And the TracePro bridge will let you access all the properties you have in your TracePro material, your TracePro property database. So you can apply any properties uh, that you've already defined or from our standard catalogs. So now this property here, this glass window now has that borosilicate property. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this out in a few different ways. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to save these here in this folder. My first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a Trace Pro file, since I'm using the Trace Pro bridge for SolidWorks. And I'm going to call this, so I can find them, Trace Pro version. But I'm also, once that saves, okay. I'm also going to save this as an SAT file, uh, ACIS, star.sat. Uh, SAT is the native uh, CAD kernel in TracePro, so you can actually import these into TracePro without translators. Now SolidWorks has SAT output, but some CAD programs don't. So another option we have we could save this as a step or an IGES file. I'm going to save this now as a step file. Okay, so we've, we've exported from SolidWorks now three different ways. OML, the TracePro format, uh, an SAT file, and a step. Uh, additionally, we could do IGES as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into TracePro and I'm going to look for those files. Well, here's the one we exported as the OML file. Now one advantage if you're using SolidWorks and you have the bridge is we can look here. Here's the glass diffuser. It already has the glass uh, material property applied, the borosilicate property. We can also look at, I'm going to go to open, change my file format here to SAT and here's my SAT version, the ACES version. Or lastly, I could also open up, change my file type to STEP. So this is three different ways of getting that model into TracePro. I uh, should note that uh, the STEP and IGES translators are optional. Uh, they don't come standard with TracePro. That's why I usually recommend the, the SAT file format as a good starting point. Uh, if your CAD program will export SAT, uh, you don't need that, those extra translators. But we do have the STEP and IGES translators available um, to add into TracePro if your program, if like for example, CATIA does not have a, an SAT output. So you be able to save a step or I just there. Okay, I'm just going to close some windows here. I'm going to stick with the, the OML version since I've already applied one of my properties here. i make this window a little bit bigger. Now I want to apply a few more properties uh, based on going back a few screens where we were looking at the different properties. Uh, for one, I'm going to apply to all of the parts of the luminaire here, the desk lamp, I'm going to select them all. I'm going to do a right click and choose properties. And from the default catalog for surface properties, I'm going to apply a black paint property. Okay. And if we were to expand some of these surfaces, we can see it's applied to all objects and surfaces that I selected. Uh, fast, easy way to, to apply surface properties to all of the objects at one time. Okay. Uh, on my target here, I'm actually going to go through the surfaces. Okay, surface 4 is my top surface. I'm just going to click on that surface and rename it top. Makes it easier to find in the future. And then I'm going to apply 
again, a surface property from the, uh, from the default catalog. It's a perfect absorber property. So this surface is now going to absorb any light that hits it, 100% absorption. And then I'm going to turn off the display here of the target and the diffuser. Again, just select them, right click, display object. And I'm going to zoom in on my reflector here. And my reflector, I'm going to select here, again, a right click, properties and once again I'm going to stay in the default catalog and I'm going to choose a mirror property. Now if you were working with a different reflector material say one of the Alanod properties, Alcoa or Almico materials or surfaces uh, we have those catalogs in Trace Pro as well so you could just as easily apply those uh, or any custom surface finishes that you've uh, added to the program. Now, as I mentioned, this, this is a faceted reflector with curved uh, facets here. Uh, and this was done using that new feature in the, the 3D optimizer that I mentioned. Uh, I think we're, we're probably going to be looking to do an, a webinar on some of the new features we've added to the optimizers uh, probably within the next couple months. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. Just as I'm going along, I'll save it. And I think that's, uh, as far as surface and material properties, that's what I'm going to do now. Now, obviously, there's more surfaces uh, that we could look at. For example, there's a PC board that these LEDs are mounted to. We could apply properties there. But the next thing I want to apply is the surface source property to the emitting surface of these LEDs. And these are somewhat basic models of an LED, but, but they have the emitting surface, the chip, and then the body of the LED. I'm going to use the surface select tool here and I'm going to choose the face of the chip each one of these models. I do a right click and choose properties and now I'm going to go to